Hi. Now in this video tutorial what I want to do is introduce you to what we mean by the center of mass. And to do that I've got an example here of a light rod say AB with three particles attached to it of masses 5 kilograms, 2 kilograms and 3 kilograms. And you can see the distances between them. The distance from the 5 kilogram mass to A is 2 meters and then between these two particles 1 meter and between these two particles 3 meters. So when we are thinking about the center of mass. It's a point where we can think of all the mass as acting. Or you might be familiar with it as a point where you would balance this rod. It would be a point somewhere around here. Let's just mark that point in. Let's say we call it C. Now if it was like a seesaw, this would be balanced about this point. There'll be a contact force at C acting upwards. Let's say it's of R newtons. And let's say the distance of the two kilogram particle from the point here C is X meters and that would make the distance from B to C 3 minus X. So just mark that in. So how are we going to find where the center of mass acts. We've got to establish what x is and to do that we can take moments about c. So if we take moments about c we need to set up a positive sense. It doesn't matter which way we take as positive but I'm going to take anti-clockwise as positive. So if we're taking moments about c then what we would have is the weight 5g times the distance to C which would be 1 plus X. So would give us 5g then multiplied by 1 plus X plus the weight 2g multiplied by the distance X. Then it would be minus for the 3g Newtons Okay, so that would be minus 3g multiplied by that distance 3 minus x. And because the rod AB is in equilibrium, there's no resultant turning effect about C. So that would equal 0. And if we were to expand this bracket now and solve this equation for x, we'd end up with 5g plus 5gx plus 2gx minus 9g and then plus 3gx and that equals 0. And if we group up the terms in gx we've got 5gx plus 2gx plus 3gx that's 10gx and then here we've got 5g minus 9g which is minus 4g. If we were to add that to both sides we'd end up with that equaling 4g. The g's cancel and so if we divide both sides by 10 we end up with x equaling 4 divided by 10 or 0.4. So you can see that the center of mass C then is a distance of 0.4 meters away from the 2 kilogram particle. If we wanted the distance of the center of mass away from say A, well that would be easy. The distance from A would simply be 2 meters plus 1 meter plus X, a total of 3.4 meters. Now this is not necessarily the best way of tackling this type of problem. What I want to show you is a better method. What we'll do is we'll draw that light beam out again, okay, AB. And we've got our particles attached. Now if we think of the center of mass then as acting at a particular point along AB, let's say it's here. We called that point C last time. Now we can think of all of the mass then acting through that point C. Let's just put it down here. It's going to have a total mass of 
10 kilograms. So the weight acting down here would be 10 g newtons. And let's suppose the distance to A from C was given as x bar. Mark that in like so, x bar from there to there. Now, if we were to take moments about A, only this time we would have, say, clockwise as the positive sense then what we're looking at is the total moment 10g times x bar we'll mark it in 10g times x bar that total moment is equivalent to the individual moments of all these particles about a so the moment produced by the 5 kilogram mass will be its weight 5g multiplied by 2 plus then we have 2g times 3 and then plus 3g multiplied by the distance AB which is a total of 6 meters so when we work this out we end up with 10g x bar equals we have 10g plus 6g plus 18g and that gives us 10g x bar equals a total of 34g and if we divide both sides by 10g the g's cancel and you get 34 divided by 10 so it follows that x bar equals 34 divided by 10 which is 3.4 so we're 3.4 meters away from a for the center of mass and looking at doing it something like this is a lot easier generally than doing it this way so therefore in general, we could say that to find the center of mass of a set of n particles along a light beam could be found by saying, well, OK, I'm going to find out what the total mass of all the particles are. Then you've got that total weight, which would be mg, multiplied by x bar is going to equal the sum sigma of all the moments of the weights of the individual particles. Okay, we had three particles here, but if there were n particles, we could say it would be mg multiplied by x for each one of the particles. But if there were n particles, we could say each of the mass was mi and the distance it was from, say, a was xi, i going from one to n for the n particles and this total mass m here is the sum of all the individual small masses mi i going from one to n but do you notice that all the g's are in every term and so they could cancel one another out. Okay, we could divide through totally by g. In an equation like this, these g's would cancel and we end up with this type of formula that m times x bar equals the sum of all the individual masses, mi, times the distance xi to the point we're taking moments about and that would be going for i going from 1 to n. Again, where m is the sum of all the small individual masses, which we call mi, i going from 1 to n. And it's this particular formula that we tend to use, rather than doing all the work that we've done before. So if I was applying this formula for a question like this, I would just say 10 x bar then equals 5 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 6. Work it out without the g's being there 
and I would get x bar equaling 3.4. Now I've got another example that demonstrates this using this formula rather than going to these kind of lengths. You might like to try it. What we've got then is to find the position of the centre of mass of three particles of mass is 4 kilograms, 5 kilograms and 6 kilograms placed on the x-axis at the points 3, 0, 6, 0 and 13, 0 respectively. So you might like to have a go at that. Just pause the video, come back when ready and I'll run through the solution. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Well, not that you have to draw a diagram, but I would always encourage you to try and sketch one. I would just draw my line here, which in this case is the x-axis, just like our light beam that we had. And we've got the origin here, O. So we have our particles of 4 kilograms, 5 kilograms and 6 kilograms situated at various points along this line here. 4 kilograms there, 5 kilograms and we'll mark in the 6 kilograms. It's not drawn to scale but uh, just gives us an idea what's going on. This distance is at 3 units then the 5 kilograms was at 6 units from O. That would mean that the distance between here is 3. And the 6 kilogram mass was 13 units from O. Well, there's 6 there, so this is going to be 7 units. Now, if we think about where the centre of mass might be, let's say we put it here. We'll call that point C. And that total mass there is m kilograms and it's at a distance x bar say from O. So if we think about the formula remember it was the total mass m multiplied by x bar was equal to the sum of all the individual masses we'll call them mi multiplied by their distance xi back to the point that we were taking moments about. And that was for however many particles we had, say n particles. So when we apply that to this problem here, if we say we're taking moments, let's just mark it in, taking moments about O, what will we end up with? Well, we'd have the total mass is 4 kilograms plus 5 kilograms plus 6 kilograms, a total of 15 kilograms, so that's going to be 15 multiplied by x bar is equal to 4 times 3 plus, then we've got the 5 kilograms times the distance to O, which is 6, 5 times 6, plus and then we've got 6 kilograms multiplied by the distance to O, which is going to be 13 units. So we've got 6 times 13. Remember, normally these would have Gs on each of the masses to represent the weight, giving us the total moment. But those Gs cancelled, so we reduced the formula down to this. Anyway, so if we work this out, we've got 15x bar equals, and if you total that you get 120 and if we divide both sides by 15 you end up with x bar equaling 8 units 8 units then away from O that's the position then of the center of mass okay well that brings us now to the end of this particular video but uh, I hope that it's given you some understanding of what we mean by the centre of mass as a point where we can consider all the mass to act from and this also can be regarded as a point where we balance our system of particles from. Now in later tutorials what we'll be looking at is extending this work into two dimensions and looking at laminars, wireframes and hanging and problems. Okay.